first question. Um, if you could say anything to your younger or struggling self, what would it be? <laughs> um, I am always worried about everything. Um, and so, and I've always been my entire life. And so if I could go back to even, you know, because that was two years ago, that video. You know, back to my 17-year-old self, even younger, I would just tell myself, it's going to be okay. And I keep telling myself like that today. Um, when I'm, I'm like, I'm like five years ahead, because I'm a college student now. But I'm like, okay, when I graduate college, I'm like, no, it's going to be okay. I like that. Uh, I think I used to take pride in being a professional warrior, but uh, it really doesn't do anything but hurt you and hurt the ones that you love. Um, staying in the present has been a big thing for me in my career as a figure skater and a filmmaker. So that is the advice I would give to you young ladies, is just do whatever you can to enjoy the present moment. Called present for a reason it is a gift. Open it, stare at it, embrace it, and don't obsess over past mistakes and don't project too far into the future. I love what both of these ladies next to you just said. I definitely let go with I think advice to younger self and as well as think to anyone. Uh, doesn't matter what age you are, I think it's male, female, definitely. I think it's okay to get help. I wish I would have known that, even if that's getting professional help, or if that's even going to like someone such as your uh, parental guardian or guardians. I think going to someone saying, "Hey, I'm feeling kind of off. Like I'm not feeling okay on the inside." Um, definitely, I think I would have known that sooner, and I definitely recommend professional help, reaching out to someone, and definitely I think as long as you feel like you have somebody to talk to, I think that's. Feeling less alone, or seeing that whatever you're going through, what you're thinking, it definitely, I guarantee there's someone out there who's going through something very similar. So definitely don't be afraid to ask for help. I think that's key, and that's something I wish I would have definitely known sooner, but like everyone else, I'm always learning um, as I get older. Yeah, I love that. I just started therapy this year, so I'm like all for yeah. getting help. Um, for me, I think I would have told my younger self that it's okay to be different um, than people around you, especially when there's so many people around you that are could be into one thing or could look like something and you're just like different and you're like, what's wrong with me? Um, there's nothing wrong with you. You will find the people that make you feel at home eventually. And if it's not now, just stay secure and confident in your being right now. Um, I mean, so everyone said this, but I agree with everything they said, obviously. Um, but one thing that I would tell my younger self is, well, first of all, I'm still young. <laughs> I'm only 18, so I'm only a few years older than you guys, so I still have a long way to go. Um, but I would tell myself to stop comparing myself to others and my life to other people's lives because that isn't going to benefit anybody, not yourself and not the other person. You're only going to hurt yourself. Um, so there's no point in doing it. Everyone's going to do different things in their life. And are on completely different paths, so comparing yourself to someone else isn't fair to you, and it isn't fair to them either. So. All great answers. Um, the next question, what inspired you to start speaking out on the issues uh, you previously or still are dealing with? Well, I tell the story everywhere I go. Um, you've heard this one. But <laughs> um, when I was 10 years old, I went to a dance studio in Colorado, where I'm from. And long story short, the dance director kicked me off his team because my body type didn't fit his vision or his worth. And I was 10 years old at the time. Wow, how could you say that to a 10 year old, let alone a human being? Um, but that's kind of what started my whole thought press process into my breaking the stereotype movement um, because at the time it really affected me in a bad way but now that I look back at it um, it's kind of what sparked my whole body positive movement and so I'm thankful that that happened um, so I would say pretty much what inspired me to start my movement and speaking out and things like that is um, what people say to me and talk about um, about me like People talking bad about me inspired me to um, kind of speak for people that might not be confident enough to talk 
about uh, the stereotypes that they are trying to bring in people who just, I don't know, people that can't speak, I try to talk to them. That was kind of a really jumbled answer, but that's kind of, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think for me, it was kind of like a personal thing. Um, when I was younger, I feel like I was really hard on myself, and I didn't, um, I like, I had like a group of people and friends that were around me, and everything was nice, and my parents were so nice, but I feel like I was very hard on myself, so what made me start um, doing videos on being like body positive and being um, confident and self-empowering is just, the younger kid that I needed. Um, I, I wanted to speak to my 14 year old self that I didn't see in social media. And now we're so lucky that we can literally just put on YouTube and see anybody who looks like us. So that is great. So originally I started speaking for myself and then I was like, well, people are seeming to catch on to this. So I just want to let them. With Ingrid, um, I made a lot of like films or a lot of like content, uh, don't like mental health. Uh, from the time I was maybe like eight years old, had a lot of panic attacks, depression, and I didn't know actually symptoms came in like different forms. I was physically sick. I think one year I missed like school 18 times because I got fevers and a lot of like stomach bugs. And then years later after uh, counseling, I think counseling has been one of like the most best decisions I've ever made of getting help. Um, I learned through counseling not too long ago that I think I was always doing some advocacy work, but I was sort of doing it like in secrecy. I would write blogs and not share it until I think back in 2015, like three, four years ago, I had a mental health nonprofit group. The owner was one of my good friends. He promoted it and then tagged me on Twitter, and I think I got a few re retweets. So I want to say that friend I had to thank because that kind of made me see, oh, other people do relate. Um, I kind of had to tell the same thing my younger self, even today, like, no, people can relate. People can have anxiety, experience sadness, and that's okay. It's, I think when you find other people you connect with, that's when you feel less alone. So that's what kind of kept me going through the mental health advocacy work. It was kind of meeting other people and advocates and hearing their stories, and we're both like, oh, okay, awesome, we both go to therapy, that's great, like, it's hard, right? And we're like, yeah, it's hard. But definitely life changing experience, and you just, as you get older, you need the right people and the individuals who are meant to be in your life as friends or colleagues. Yeah, I cannot agree more with what these ladies have just said. And I think um, my personal experience, I grew up in figure skating, which is a very individual sport. You can feel very isolated and very competitive. And so from an early age, I just kind of thought it was my job to just handle everything myself. And um, when I started getting more involved with films and working in these like teams with people with other actors and productions you start to realize that there is nothing um you know there's no like honor in isolating yourself in some kind of prison um not only is it not necessary but it really robs you from the opportunity of sharing your gifts with other people and I think as artists and storytellers, you know, dancers, all of these different things, you have a responsibility to share your gifts because when you share them, they can be healing for other people. So um, when I actually really started my advocacy journey is very recent, when I was cast in Natalie's film, The Extraordinary Ordinary, um, and that script scared me so much because the character, um, deals with anxiety and panic attacks and all these things that I had felt very shameful about growing up. And so uh, being a part of that film made me just kind of be like, okay, I have to own up to this. Like, if I'm going to say these things, I have to do these things. And, and I just, I cannot be more grateful to Natalie and that entire film family for that opportunity. So, and again, you know, just like you guys were saying, like, it's not planned. Like, when you decide to take action and reach out, kind of like a magnet, like other people that are meant to be in your circle, they, they kind of find you. So. Um, for me, um, it really just came from a starvation for love and acceptance. 
I was bullied severely in middle school. Middle school was hard. I don't think it's changed too much, which is sad. Um, but I just had such a hard time and just didn't like any bit of myself. And um, one day I just decided that, you know, whatever I've got, I've had for the rest of my life. So am I going to experience like completely hating all of this? Or am I going to find a way to learn how to love it? And so I vowed to myself to teach myself how to love myself. And that was the journey that I set out for myself. And I found Pinterest and you know all these really empowering quotes. And in retrospect, I pretty much reconditioned my brain and how I viewed myself. We are constantly being poured messages in our lives through social media, through movies, through shows, all of it. And it conditions us in the way we view ourselves. And so if you're surrounded by such negative messages, that translates into how you see yourself through this comparison. And so I figured, okay, there's a lot of negativity out there. And if it's about recon reconditioning our brains, let me pour out a ton of positive stuff. That's what I can do. So I started blogging and writing all of the stuff that you know I would, t I would you know, tell myself what I thought would be empowering and help teach me how to love myself. And I started blogging them, and then it continued on. But that's where it started. 